Hello and welcome to my short video about putting together a partial trapdoor sump for a Rover P6 V8. The first thing you're going to want to do is offer the sump up to the block. There should be nothing in the block as you're going to have to reach through the piston bores and draw around the oil pickup tube and any other interfering parts such as the baffle plate. You must then take the baffle plate, place it over the crankshaft area and then measure up how much room it takes. In this particular instance it took up about two inches. This must be your absolute maximum limit for where you can place your baffled structure. This is the first run so after I made it out of cardboard I simply cut it out in sheet metal and bolted it together. Now this gives me a rough idea of where it's going to be once it's sitting in the sump. This is the front part of the sump. As you can see here this would prevent oil from rushing forward where there is no windage tray covering the crankshaft. This is important because this engine will never see enough brake horsepower to be able to push the oil to the back of the sump. However, under heavy braking, prior to the removal of the engine, the oil warning light did come on. So, probably for the best in this case, if your engine produces more power, however, put a double diamond in. Here we have the welding of the actual trapdoor hinges. These consist of a single rolled piece of steel. You can see the rolled edge there. There is a washer on either side and a couple of old nails. The nail heads have been crimped or rolled over so that they can be welded more easily. And obviously they've also been sanded to get rid of the galvanization. It's crucial that the weld is done as neatly as possible and that the hinge is as free-floating as possible and by that I mean that it freely flaps around once you're ma uh, handling the actual baffle. Uh, you can see here this is pretty much how it should work or how it should behave. There shouldn't be any resistance whatsoever. If there is, something's gone wrong and I'm afraid you're going to have to start again. Uh, metal expands once it gets hot, not by much, the oil will keep it pretty cool but you don't want these to jam closed and you don't want them to jam open either because they won't be doing their job. Uh, here are a few shots of basically what it looks like. Um, so yeah, after the fact I decided I would drill a few more holes so bring the total up to five to allow oil to come through more easily. Uh, this is a basically a rear shot of what it looks like. You can see that the welds are very neat. The rest of the welds holding the actual baffle assembly to the sump are not as neat. Uh, you'll see here in a minute. Um, that was simply because the sump was 47 years old and there was a bit of oil impregnated into the metal. You can see here there are a few more little welds. Um, in this next one you can see the stoppers. These stop the hinges at about 30 degrees of opening. That also prevents them from hitting the oil pickup. Uh, reason being is that you don't, even though they are very light, you don't want them to be constantly hitting the pickup. There is a chance that they could partially unseat it from the block and then you will lose your oil feed, which is not a good idea. This is the cardboard that I use to mock up the rear baffle plate that's not trap doored it's just a straightforward plate uh, which I then cut out in sheet metal form and drilled four holes in it there you go you see simple as that as I mentioned earlier this engine will never see enough power to push all the oil to the back so this will be more than sufficient to stop oil surges there's a top-down view nothing really special to see here um, is a video of the hinges freely working. You can see here that uh, it doesn't really take any effort at all to move them. Uh, the washers do help, so if you just wanted to put them in with the nails straight on, you're going to experience more friction than if you put them in with the washers as well. Obviously, once this is submerged in oil, the oil will lubricate them anyway, so yeah. Needless to say, once you finish welding, the paint of the sump will be pretty much destroyed by the heat. Uh, don't really have to say much about that. Just make sure you sand it. I wanted it to look wanted it to look nice, so I very carefully sanded it down almost all the way back to bare metal, and then I applied a few heavy coats of zinc-based primer. 
uh, three coats in total so there's your first coat there's your second coat and shortly here will be the third coat yep that's paint drying and this is what it looked like for the first pass of the satin black second pass and third pass I apologize for this I probably should have sped this up anyway this is a, an idea of what one of the templates looks like a simple piece of paper just to make sure that everything is where it needs to be the top plate or the baffle or whatever you want to call it windage part is thin sheet metal the rest of it's made out of slightly thicker sheet metal but I basically just marked it up as it needed to be drilled a hole through it and then cut that out with a jigsaw not fully uh, I cut an X in with a jigsaw these veins were cut out using metal shears and then just using metal fatigue and a pair of vice grips very carefully work them backwards and forwards obviously it leaves you a very sharp lip but it doesn't really matter at this stage just wanted to make sure that the pickup fitted neatly through it and didn't interfere with anything I did need to cut out a small recess to make sure that it actually sat in the bottom of the pan and after going over it with a little drum sander on a Dremel tool I then beveled it a little to allow the oil to go in more easily if you notice the rear has been rolled this is so that uh, the actual oil if that lands onto it will want to go towards the pickup hole as opposed to just falling backwards uh, and landing at the rear of the sump uh, once it's in, riveted in place, that's it. It's as simple as that.